Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad. The story of the violence that moved west with young America. The story of a man who moved with it. Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. Mr. Dillon, there's Miss Kitty, there in front of the Texas Trail. Yeah, I think she's waiting to say hello, Chester. What's she going to work so early for? Why, well, it ain't hardly noon yet. I don't know about Kitty, but the stage from Wichita's due in about noon. Oh, I plumb forgot. Sheriff Benson's coming today, ain't he? That's what the telegram said. Why would the sheriff of Wichita come all the way to Dodge, Mr. Dillon? Must be mighty important. Well, maybe there's somebody here he'd like to take back with him. Hello, Kitty. Hello, Matt. Chester. Miss Kitty? So this is what Dodge looks like at noon. It's a little too real for me. <laughs> we were wondering what brought you out so early. Uh, Sam sent word. He wanted to see me. Come on in and say hello. Okay. We got a few minutes. Hello. Hello, Sam. Hello, Sam. Marshal. Hello, hey. Sam. Hello, Chester. You having a drink, gentlemen? Uh, no, thanks, Sam. Sam, it isn't uh, noon yet. What am I doing here? <laughs> yeah, thanks for coming, Kitty. It's a new girl I just hired. I thought it'd be sort of nice if you'd take her over and sort of show her the ropes. Glad to, Sam. She came in from St. Louis on the Santa Fe this morning. Needed a job real bad. Well, I hope she's not one of those innocent lambs who's been a lady all her life. <laughs> I'll, I'll go get her. Sam takes pity on every lost soul that hits this town. No woman could stay lost around Dodge for long. <laughs> That's true, Chester. That's why most of these women ought to stay home. Say, she's pretty. Kara. What? Uh, uh, that's her name, Kara. You know her? Yeah. Yeah, I know her. Well, here, here she is, everybody. Kara, this is Kitty and Marshal Dillon and Chester Proudfoot. Hello, Kara. Aren't you going to say hello, Matt? It's been a long time, Kara. Matt and I knew each other out in Arizona, for a while anyway, till Matt sort of changed his mind. Well, what are you doing in Dodge, Kara? I thought you'd be surprised. I heard you were marshal here. Somebody told me on the train. Uh-huh. You've been living in St. Louis? I've been living everywhere, Matt. I left Arizona about a year after you did. I even tried San Francisco. I made out pretty good there, too. Oh. Uh, you planning on staying in Dodge? Why not? I heard there's a lot of easy money here. Sure, sure. Any objections to my stay in, Matt? Well, of course not. Kitty, it's it's real sweet of you to show me around. Uh -huh. Let's sit over there and have a talk first, shall we? Sure. Maybe you can teach me a few things. See you later, gentlemen. Well, I'll say one thing, Mr. Dillon. She's a right pretty girl, anyway. Yeah. But she's changed since I knew her. She's changed a lot. Uh, come on, Chester. The stage is about due. Now, this is my office here, Sheriff. Oh, Dodge is sure growed, Marshal. Been three or four years since I was here. Yeah. Must look mighty small compared to Wichita, Mr. Benson. <laughs> Maybe Dodge will be bigger than Wichita someday. But it's Denver, they say, has grown. I'm curious to see that. Are you headed for Denver, Sheriff? 
They're holding a the killer for me up there. Oh. Well, sit down, sit down. I'm taking the next stage west, Marshal, but uh, I wanted to be sure to see you on the way through Dodge. There's some trouble headed here. Oh? A fella called Jack Tolliver. He's a bank robber, Marshal. And he's killed a few men along the way. He opened up the state bank in Wichita about a year ago, and he's been working his way through the Dakota since then. But I hear he's back in Kansas. Took $5,000 out of the bank at Salina a few weeks back. Well, what makes you think he's going to try Dodge, Sheriff? Because he's heading south. Dodge is a natural for them. Them? He's got a couple of partners. I don't know their names. Yeah. Uh, what does this Tolliver look like? That's the trouble, Marshal. Nobody ever got a good look at him, I know of, but uh, I can't tell you something about one of the gang. He sends this one ahead of him to sort of look things over for a week or so, and then he and the other two ride in. Uh-huh. What about the man that scouts ahead for him? It uh, ain't a man, Marshal. It's a woman. A woman? Don't know her name. She changes it all the time anyway, but she's right pretty. About five foot seven, black hair, hazel eyes. She's smart and she's tough. Mighty right, clear. Mr. Dillon, that sounds nice. That's a like... pretty clever operation, Chester. Well, uh, Sheriff, I sure thank you for telling me all this. Uh, we'll be watching for him. Well, I better go get some dinner before that stage pulls out. See you on my way back, Marshal. Goodbye, Chester. Bye, Mr. Benson. Thanks again, Sheriff. Mr. Dillon, that sure did sound like Kara he was describing. No, oh, but of course she wouldn't be mixed up in anything like that. Well, I said she'd changed, Chester, but I hope she hasn't changed that much. I, uh, I think I better go have a talk with her. Kitty told me. I, uh, I'd like to talk to you, Kara. Sure. Come in. Thank you. Is it embarrassing for you, Matt? My being in Dodge? Why should it be, Kara? Well, we were pretty good friends once. Well, we can still be friends. You mean that, Matt? You really mean it? You know what I mean, Kara. Why'd you come here? What do you want? Oh, just to talk a little. About what? About you. Where you been. Did you ever get married? Things like that. No, I never got married. And I told you I've been everywhere. What else? Uh, what have you been doing lately? Why'd you leave St. Louis? I haven't been in St. Louis. Are you, you said you just came from there. You didn't let me finish. I haven't been in St. Louis very long, and I had no reason to stay there. Matt, what's this all about? If you don't want me in Dodge, say so. I'll leave. Oh, no, you're, you're welcome in Dodge, Kara. I don't know whether to believe you or not. Oh, maybe I'm being too curious. I'll shut up. Oh, it isn't that. I guess it's just that there's a lot of things I don't want to talk about. You understand that. Sure, sure. But I won't be bothering you anyway. I have to go out of town for a few days tomorrow. Oh? Where are you going? Salina. They're holding a prisoner for me there. Salina? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're going tomorrow? Yeah. I'll, I'll be back in a couple of days. So. Matt? Couldn't you put it off for a while? Say, another week? Why, Carol? I don't know. I'd like you around. I feel like such a stranger here. I'll be more at home in another week. Please, Matt? Uh, sure, Carol. Doesn't make much difference. Uh, you, you let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Thanks, Matt. I will. Uh, 
Was she there, Mr. Dillon? Yeah. Did you find out anything? Only if she is mixed up with this man, Tolliver, she can't get in touch with him for a week. But we won't worry about it till then. It'd be kind of too bad. I mean, you being a friend of hers and all. The sheriff said Tolliver's killed a number of men, Chester. I won't mind stopping him. If I can. We will return for the second act of Gun, Smoke in just a moment. But first... United States savings bonds pay 3% interest when held to maturity. They're safe, they're sure. No gamble with Uncle Sam's savings bonds. The bond a month plan at your bank or your payroll savings plan makes saving automatic. Now the second act of Gun Smoke. <laughs> A few days passed, and as I'd thought, nothing happened. Kara worked at the Texas Trail. And although we kept an eye on her, she talked to so many strangers every day, there was no way of telling which might have been her bank robber friend, Jack Tolliver. Would have been easy for him to just ride into town anytime he wanted, buy Kara a drink and get what information she'd gathered. I talked to her now and then. And although she tried not to show it, I was pretty sure she was aware that I was suspicious of her. And then one day, I was real sure. Doc and Chester and I just finished a game of three-handed stud in the office. Six fifty, six seventy-five, and seven. <clears throat> seven fifty, eight dollars. You have to count it out loud, Doc. Eight fifty, nine, nine fifty. Ah, there we are. <laughs> Yeah, well, I do it to teach you a lesson, Chester. You got my money, ain't that enough? <laughs> oh, you're always thinking of money, Chester. Money isn't the only pleasure in the world. Why, there's also... Oh, my, there's... Uh, well, uh, well, there's also... Um, um, also um, what? <laughs> you better think hard, Doc. He's following you mighty close. Uh, did you ever go out in the night, Chester, and look at the stars? What? Did you ever watch them and feel close to nature and enjoy the great and wondrous beauty of it all? You talk like you had a drink, Doc. Uh -uh. Oh, just... Of course, I watched the stars whenever it wasn't raining or snowing or blowing the wind down out of the north or whenever I wasn't just too doggone saddle-weary and tuckered out to keep my eyes open. You're a hard man to inspire, Chester. Uh, saving you from the devil would be a full-time job. And I'm afraid it's too late. Now, oh, here. I... Uh, the world has corrupted you, Chester. It's touched your soul. It's withered it like a... Oh, my, my like a... Like a bean. Like a bean? Now, doggone it, you listen here, Doc. <laughs> oh, Adam, Kitty! <laughs> oh, oh, well, look upon her, Chester. The beauty of womanhood in all its passionate splendor. What? It sure beats the stars, anyway. Are you too drunk? <laughs> Doc's been trying to teach Chester to take a larger view of life, Kitty. <laughs> Doc's got all my money, and he's just crowing about it. That's all he's doing. Money, huh? Well, that's just what I came here for. Oh, what do you mean, Kitty? I need $20, Matt. Oh, well, sure. There you are. Before I take it, I better tell you, it isn't for me. What? Cara needs it. She came to me, and I didn't have it, but I said I thought I could get it for her. I think she knows where... She could have come to me herself. Too proud, maybe. How come she's broke? She's been working. I didn't ask her what it's for, Matt. Uh, it's all right, Kitty. Give it to her. I will. But I'll tell you something. What? I've met some pretty tricky women here and there. But your old friend, Kara, has them all beat. I'll give her the money. Chester. Yes, sir? Follow Kitty. Don't let Kara out of your sight till you find out what that money's for. I'll wait here for you. Okay, Mr. Dillon. Uh, 
Well, the depot's already crowded, Chester. It must be close to train time. Yes, sir. And Carol will be here. I know she will. The agent told me she bought one ticket to St. Louis and asked what time the next train leaves. Well, I hope she's here. And maybe she's innocent after all, Mr. Dillon. Well, we'll soon find out, Chester. Oh, there she is over there. Yes, and all dressed up, too. Kara's always all dressed up. Hello, Matt. Chester? Miss Kara? You're staring at me, Matt. I'm just wondering why you didn't come and say goodbye if you're leaving Dodge. What makes you think I'm leaving? Well, you bought a ticket to St. Louis with the $20 I gave Kitty for you. Yes, I did. I knew you'd figure it all out, Matt. And I knew you'd think I'm leaving. I wanted you to. Why, Kara? Because I've enjoyed making a fool of you. Have you? A friend of mine's leaving on that train, Matt. Jack Tolliver? I knew you were on to us. I'll watch Kara if you want to go after him, Mr. Dillon. There are 20 strangers down here, Chester. How do I know which one's Tolliver? <laughs> you know, I could arrest you, Kara. You're wanted in a lot of places. You're too smart for that, Matt. Arrest me and you'd never find Jack. Sure, but once Tolliver's on that train, I can find him. How? I'll have the whole train put under guard when it gets to Abilene. And one by one, every man on it will have to clear himself. We'll get him. No, you won't. He'll jump off. He won't know what I'm going to do, and you can't warn him now. Hey, it's pulling out, Mr. Dillon. We'll make it, Chester. So long, Kara. No, Matt, wait. Come on, Chester, run. Matt, come back. Hell, we made it. You sure fooled her, Mr. Dillon. Kara doesn't think I fooled her, Chester. What do you mean? She thinks she fooled me. Well, how? She wants me on this train. She planned the whole thing for it. Well, why are we here then? Well, we won't be for long. There's a ranch close to the tracks about ten miles from here. I'll have the conductor stop the train and we'll get off there and then borrow a couple of horses. And, and ride on back to Dodge? Jack Tolliver's in Dodge, Chester. He's thinking he can hold up the bank any time he wants to now. But there's nobody to stop him. Tied the horse way over yonder, Mr. Dillon. Plumb out of sight. Oh, good. It's almost dark anyway. They'd never see him. Yeah. Well, things look quiet enough. Come on, let's get inside the bank. We'll wait for him there. How are we going to get in, Mr. Dillon? Ain't it locked? Yeah, there isn't more than a couple of hundred dollars in there, Chester. Mr. Botkin's been keeping the bank's real money in a safe at his home ever since I heard about Jack Tolliver. He gave me a key to the rear door here. Well, if there's nothing for him to steal, what do we care? Well, I'll let you figure that out for yourself, Chester. Hmm? Uh, where'll I get at, Mr. Dillon? Uh, over there by the window there. Oh, you can see him, huh? Well, what if they try to come in the front? No, they won't. It's too exposed. I'll wait over here. When they come... We'll leave them alone until they get clear inside, you understand? Yes, sir, I won't shoot till you do. All right, good. Now, don't stand right in front of the window, Chester. They'll see you. Yeah, but I can't see good if I'm at one side. You don't have to be at one side. Just stand a few feet back from it. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's better. My. I sure do wish there was a moon tonight. Yeah, it'll be a help, all right. Uh-oh. What? There's some horses. They're heading this way. How many? Four, I think. Yep, four. Yeah, that's them. Here they come. They're getting down. Three of them are. They're handing their reins to the other one. I hope now he's getting down, too. She, Chester. That's probably Kara. Oh my God, I think it is. All right, quiet now. Yes, sir. Not so much noise. Pete, taking care of us all the way down Front Street. 
All clear, Kara. Okay, Jack. All right. Go ahead, you two. I'll follow. All right. Behind the banker's desk there, according to Kara. Yeah. All right, get your what? hands in the air, Oliver. All of you. You're coming. I can't see it. No. 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 I got two of them, Chester. Told her to run outside, but I hit him. He's wounded. Look, Kara's having to help him. Hold it, Oliver. Kara, get away from him. No, you don't, Kara. You stay right here. Don't hide behind me, Jack. You'll kill me. He won't kill you. But if you move, I will. No, let me go. Get around behind him, Chester. Yes, sir. You're trapped, Oliver. Now let Kara go. You just stay right where you are, both of you. I'll kill her if you don't. You coward, Jack. Get away from me. I warned you. <laughs> I didn't get him soon enough. Let's see how Kara is. Kara. Kara. I'm sorry, Kara. It's too dark. I couldn't shoot any quicker. Kara. I don't think she heard me, Chester. He shot her right in the back, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. Well, sir, that's the end of Jack Tolliver's gang. It's the end of a lot of things, Chester. A lot of things. Yes, sir, I guess it is. Gunsmoke, under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell, Jill Jarman, Vic Perrin, and John Daner. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal, fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. Guns blaze away in Peaceful Valley. Tomorrow night on CBS Radio, Gene Autry rides right into the middle of a border feud and tries his hand at settling things. Don't miss the Gene Autry Show, tomorrow on most of these same stations. The Star's Address presents America's favorite singing cowboy and his Melody Ranch pals every Sunday. George Walsh speaking. Your news is always accurately reported when it comes from the CBS Radio Network.